saying earlier, the state-owned Gabon oil company was created back in August 2011. In just under two years, it secured 9,000 barrels a day from its uh, controlling stake in the Ubangu oil field and has also signed agreements with Total and Shell in the country. So let's uh, get more on uh, the company's operations. We've got Serge Tulekima, CEO of the Gabonese oil company, joining us. Uh, from Libreville, Gabon. Thanks so much for joining us today, Serge. Great to have you on the show today. Now, of course, the context is that uh, the GOC, if we could call it that, uh, shortened to that, is only two years old right now. But give us an idea of what the mandate that you have right now is to develop the, the state's uh, oil uh, assets. Well, let me first say thank you for having me on CNBC Africa. Uh, like you said, the Gabon Oil Company was created on August 24, 2011. And the objective of the company is actually to be involved from exploration to production and oil marketing. Mm -hmm. So we have the mandate to manage uh, state participations. We also have the mandate to commercialize the state oil entitlement. Mm -hmm. So those are the two key things right now that's uh, on my plate. So you've signed lifting agreements um, with Total Gabon and Shell Gabon, and this of course gives you exposure to, to the marketing supply chain. So what does that mean about better control of the supply chain, and what does that mean in terms of uh, the, uh, the uh, kind of money that you'd make from uh, having control of that? Well, first of all, I would like to, I mean, uh, extend my thanks to our partners Total Gabon and Shell Gabon for concluding these uh, lifting agreement. Uh, so, it, for the state, I mean, the first thing is actually to be involved in the oil marketing to actually understand the uh, entire chain from exploration, production and marketing like I was saying. So this fits actually with uh, the mandates that have been given. Now, the oil we are marketing is actually 100% state oil. So this is not GOC oil. Mm -hmm. So the revenues from uh, the commercialization of that oil obviously has to be uh, uh, sent to the uh, state treasury. So, so, I mean, through that, ultimately, um, what type of estimates are there on the table in terms of um, the resources that this would generate for the state? Well, right now, I mean, what we're marketing at the moment uh, represent, like I was saying, still the, the, the portion of the oil that actually entitled to the state, okay? And then in exchange, I mean, we have a fee, of course, for doing this job for the state. But over time, uh, what we're actually looking at, uh, because right now we're working with a, partner, but, uh, with a partner, but over time, what we're trying to do is actually open a desk at, and have a GOC desk, uh, most likely in London, to be able to actually to contact the refineries and do this marketing ourselves as well. And that should actually have a positive impact on the cash flow to the state. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about uh, the Abangu field because uh, certainly we all know it's not been without controversy taking back that field from ADAX Petroleum, which is a subsidiary of Sinopec, a Chinese uh, oil company there. So um, let's just hear it from you in terms of the state's position as to, to why you chose um, to take this, uh, the licenses back from ADAX. Well, first of all, let me say uh, GOC is uh, an oil company. We are not the regulator. There is actually a distinction between our role and the role of the ministry. The ministry is the regulator. So some of these questions actually are best asked to, to the state. But what I would say simply is what's happening here is a license came up for renewal. Uh, the regulator, which is the Ministry of uh, Hydrocarbon, they did a due diligence and they came to the conclusion that the renewal was not possible and they informed uh, ADAX that uh, they could not renew the license. So that's the situation we found ourselves in and obviously ADAX, I suppose, have put argument on the table that they think they should get the renewal. Mm -hmm. And of course, also, as you say, questions are for the oil ministry. Let's just move on from that um, and look more broadly as to uh, the foreign view right now in terms of investing in the uh, oil sector in Gabon, because we know that oil production has declined by 30% uh, since the 1997 peak. It's now between 220,000 and 240,000 barrels per day. Um, so, so what is your experience of foreign investors' um, attitude towards putting money into the Gabonese oil sector? And do you think that the aid 
anti-vax issue has perhaps dented perceptions? No, I mean, if uh, you've been following what's been going on recently with uh, deep water, I mean, you will actually see uh, a large flurry of activities. I mean, there are actually lots of companies who have expressed interest to invest into the deep water uh, offshore Gabon. So I don't think there is an issue there. Yes, the production is going down, but obviously there are things that are being done, and one of the things is uh, stimulating exploration through the licensing of the deep water blocks. Uh, we also at Gabon Oil been uh, looking at ways how to put some proposal uh, forward to the state, uh, some maybe looking at rearranging some of the fiscal terms to encourage some of the operators to actually increase production from the existing fields. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, production going down is not uh, something uh, that can be uh, uh, move away from but ultimately I mean the key thing here is actually what we are doing and the state is actually determined to change this trend through the deep water licensing that will be uh, actually coming up very soon. And of course having spent some time in Australia working for Chevron you've also got the international perspective so what has that done for you in terms of fulfilling your role at uh, the GOC right now as, as CEO I mean what is how's the oil sector changed and what do you bring back from your overseas experience? Well, I mean, obviously, I mean, I've worked in uh, different places around the world, I mean, for different companies. So coming back here in Gabon, I mean, I can draw from those experiences. I mean, I, I spent some uh, very, very good years when I was in Malaysia. And uh, I mean, Petronas being the national company over there is actually a very well-known company that's doing a very, very good job over there. So there is some experience to draw from that what we can be done over here. I've also, I mean, I did spend some time also working uh, for Shell, I mean, which is also a very, very good company. And uh, I did learn uh, quite uh, uh, interesting, I mean, things when it comes to safety and when it comes to uh, operating assets properly. So these are, I mean, some of the experiences I can draw from uh, on this job. But what it comes down to is actually yep. good decision uh, making. So I just have to make sure that in this job, we are making those decisions properly every day.